It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine, the show where we wash down tacos with liberal tears. I'm hungry. Let's get a taco. Donald Trump will be the 45th president of the United States, winning the most <laughs> unreal, surreal <laughs> election we have ever seen. This candidacy starting on an escalator ride one year ago. I am your host, The Stimulator, and after being held hostage for a year and a fucking half to the torturous political freak show that is the U.S. election, it was horrible. On Tuesday, November 9th, peeps around the world watching stunned horror as pundits and news anchors announce that a fascist fucking reality TV star had been selected for the most powerful motherfucking position on Earth. This can't be happening, man. This isn't happening. While world leaders like Vladimir Putin, Kim Jong-un, and the Philippine psychopathic jefe, Rodrigo Duterte, are fucking stoked to have an unstable, feckless megalomaniac with no political or military experience in the White House, politicians in Europe, on the other hand, are freaking the fuck out. We've actually elected an internet troll as our president. This sentiment was summed up by France's ambassador to the United Snakes, Gerardo Rod who with the notable flair for the dramatic that the French are known for, claimed that Trump's election signaled the end of the neoliberal era and that, quote, the world is collapsing before our eyes. U.S. Border Protection, how can I help you? Well, see, you can help me. Devuélveme mi trabajo. And while a not-so-controlled demolition of the global political and economic order sounds like it'd be fucking great news, it's far-right nationalist parties who are the ones doing the celebrating. Fuck Trump! Fuck Trump! Meanwhile, in the United Snakes, shit starting popping off almost immediately. As votes were still being tallied, peeps in Portland, Eugene, and Oakland took to the streets to vent their rage. This was followed the next morning by mass high school walkouts in California, Colorado, New York, and D.C. And despite desperate appeals for our peeps to unite around Trump, coming from the man your mama calls Obama, by Wednesday evening a wave of spontaneous protests had broken out in cities all across the motherfucking country. These rowdy protests continued to swell and deepen over the next following nights, with tactics sown through the past two years of anti-police demos being put into effect. Highways were blocked, barricades went up, and rebellious youth threw down with the pigs. I watched a white riot in Portland, Oregon on television the other night. The news said they did a million dollars worth of damage. Every black person was watching that like amateurs. And to be sure, Trump and his supporters have given peeps plenty of reasons to throw down. In the days following his election, black and brown peeps, women and anyone perceived as being Muslim, have been hounded and attacked on the streets and in classrooms across the United Snakes. In an open and hideously proud display of racism, even worse than the Brexit times five that Trump promised. And while most peeps are focused on the odious fucking personality of Trump himself, the implications of his presidency and who he's likely to elevate into position of power make shit even fucking worse. I'm animated. I'm alive. My heart's big. It's got hot blood going through it fast. Because let's be real, Trump's a fucking dipshit who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. They're remaking Indiana Jones without Harrison Ford. You can't do that. And now they're making Ghostbusters with only women. What's going on? But he's surrounded by some seriously fucking dangerous pieces of shit. And with the Republicans consolidating control of both the House and the Senate, these dangerous turd tokers are going to have a shit ton of leeway when it comes to implementing their hyper-repressive corporatist agenda. From his vice president Mike Pence, a hawkish, homophobic, born-again Christian, Koch brothers frontman, climate change denier, and darling of the Tea Party, who will be the real power behind the throne to Rudolf 9-11 Giuliani, who sits poised to be the next attorney general, a man who was mayor of New York, was instrumental in introducing stop and frisk and broken window policing, and who has repeatedly gone on the record calling Black Lives Matter protesters racist. Why do we have to say that Black Lives Matter? Now, I admit that is not the best slogan, but McDonald's already took, you deserve a break today. <laughs> White nationalists, vigilante militias, and neo-Nazi groups will now feel even more emboldened to use paramilitary violence against their racial and political opponents. Immigrants will be rounded up and deported at an even higher rates than before. And the pigs will be giving a free hand to shoot and repress whoever the fuck they want without having to worry about having their feelings hurt by being gently chided by the president. In other words, shit's about to go from really bad to even motherfucking worse. 
the thin veneer of liberal respectability that hid the brutality of the Obama administration will be ripped off, once again revealing in all its hideous clarity the unrestrained white supremacist heteropatriarchal colonial violence that lies at the heart of American society. So the question to the motherfucking resistance is, what the fuck are we gonna do about it? Yeah, fuck Ain't Donald nobody Trump. else gonna speak up, yeah, we gonna speak fuck up. Fuck Donald Trump. Yeah, nigga, fuck Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, fuck Donald Trump. I got a question. Yeah.